Good evening. Thank you for coming out to our Sunday School Christmas program. If you want to take your bulletins, we'll go over some of the announcements for this week. We have on uh, Monday, tomorrow night, is the Garden State Bible School. Tuesday evening is the Board of Trustees meeting at the Pilgrim Academy. Wednesday is our uh, weekly prayer meeting, uh, Patch Club, Yams Bible Study. And uh, apparently in the youth group, it is Ugly Sweater Day. So before, be sure to remember to bring your ugly sweaters on Wednesday. Thursday at 6 p.m., there is a choir practice. I, I believe it's the last, I guess you may practice Sunday, that Sunday of the concert itself, or the cantata itself. But um, be there, choir members. Uh, there are... Um, there is an opportunity for you to place poinsettias up in the front here for next week's Christmas cantata. Uh, you can uh, speak to Paula Holen about that. Uh, the, you, you can say, I want this in memory of, in honor of, or you can just give it anonymously. Um, and you, you give your money, your $7. I think there's forms still on the table in the back for saying, I want to purchase a poinsettia to help decorate uh, the front of the church here for next week's Christmas cantata service. And that brings us to the next thing. Here is the next week's Christmas cantata service. It is called Even Into Bethlehem. Uh, there, the presentation will be followed by the, candle, the lighting of candles. We do have our annual uh, tradition of Christmas caroling on Christmas Eve. We will meet at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, December 24th. There will be no Wednesday night prayer meeting on Christmas Day. However, please take time in the day to pray and remember uh, the needs of others. And then we have our annual wash night service. will be on Tuesday, December 31st at 9 p.m. To pray in the new year, the program will include refreshments, video, testimonies, and prayer. And there is two sign-up. There are two sign-up sheets in the back on the table, one for if you're coming and how many in your group are coming. The other one is what food item will you be bringing to share with everyone else. Is there any other announcements that anybody needs to make. All right. Um, in, uh, as you came in, you should have received a sheet uh, that has Luke 2, 8 to 16. Uh, if you have not received one, please raise your hand. Derek here will uh, pass them out to you. So, um, did, Mr. Layton, did you bring them up? Did you bring up the sheets? Oh, you'll have to go. They're, they're on the Joe Ash box in the back there. So uh, during the prelude, um, you can uh, keep your hand raised. Derek will uh, give you your, your sheet of your Bible verse. Okay, let's uh, quiet our hearts now, be in prayer for the Christmas program, that the Lord will speak to our hearts. You know, it's not a performance, if you will. Yes, they are performing, but it is not a performance to you. It is a performance to God and is assisting us in the worship of our Savior.
There is a hymn listed in your bulletin that we're going to sing, but we're going to skip that. Uh, there are opportunities for you to sing during the Christmas program, so we're going to jump right into our program called God's Supernatural Love. During this busy Christmas season, let us pause a few moments this evening to wonder at the supernatural life of Jesus Christ and God's supernatural love for all people. Supernatural means something that cannot be explained by the known forces of, or laws of nature. Supernatural is something out of the ordinary. The greatest series of supernatural events ever seen on earth began about nine months before the birth of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem. Six, hark the herald angels sing.
angels are heavenly beings with supernatural power given to them by God. Sometimes God uses angels as his unseen messengers to people on earth. An angel told Mary that she would have a special baby and that she would name her baby Jesus. The same angel told Mary that her special baby would not have a human father, but this baby would be the son of God. Luke 1, 26-33. And the, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came into, in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of solution, salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give, give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall no be no end. An angel told Joseph to take Mary to be his wife. Matthew 1, 18-25 Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found a child of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But, while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth the Son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he <coughs> called his name Jesus. When Jesus was born, an angel announced his birth to some shepherds in the field near Bethlehem. She brought forth the firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, for there was no room for them in the end. Take your sheets, and we will say as a corporate reading, Luke 2, 8 to 16. And there were, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were very much afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall each to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. God in the highest, and on earth peace, 
goodwill toward all men. Angels are God's supernatural messengers. Jesus' miracles were supernatural actions that proved that he is God. The miracles also showed his love and compassion for people. But the greatest supernatural events were Jesus' own death and resurrection. Jesus gave himself to die on the cross at exactly the moment he chose, precisely when his work on earth was finished, John 19.30. While Jesus hung on the cross, a supernatural darkness cloaked the sun for three hours, from noon until Jesus died. As soon as he died, the veil in the Jewish temple at Jerusalem was torn in two, from the top down to the bottom, with a great earth and a great earthquake shook the ground. Romans 3.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ's death and resurrection brings life unto all who believe. Death, life. D is for died. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. The Bible says Jesus is the one who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree. 1 Peter 2.24. E is for enter. No one can enter into heaven with sin in his heart. And there shall in no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 21.27. A is for all. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. There is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, Romans 5.12. T is for time. God knows the time when each of us will die. Some people die at a young age, some are old, but we must all die. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, Hebrews 9.27. H is for hell. Hell is a terrible place of fire and darkness and suffering. The Bible says that we are condemned to hell already unless 
unless we believe in Jesus. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he that not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3, 18. Hell is for life. The good news is that we can have life in heaven if we believe in Jesus. We don't have to go to hell. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, shed his own blood to save us from condemnation. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 I as four includes. God's offer of the gift of eternal life includes everyone. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10.13 F is for free. God's gift of eternal life is free. We cannot buy it or earn it. For by grace we are saved through faith. And not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. E is for everlasting. The life God gives to people who believe in Jesus is everlasting. It never ends. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God abideth on him. John 3, 36. At Christmas time, we joyfully celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, but he was born to die. from the dead on the third day, just as he had prophesied. Before his death, Jesus said, I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. John 10, 17, and 18. On the morning of Jesus' resurrection, some women who visited his grave saw an angel. The angel told them, He is not here, for he is risen, and as he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. Matthew 28, 6. Yeah. 
Christ was born in a supernatural birth. He lived a supernatural life. He died a supernatural death. He rose and later returned to heaven, all by supernatural power. Jesus is God. Now we are waiting for Jesus to come back again, as he promised. Waiting for Jesus is a little like waiting for an exciting day, such as Christmas. Or it's like waiting for Grandma to come. I know she would be here, she said that she would, but time goes so slowly, it's hard to be good. I never have seen her, but I know that she is the very best grandma there ever could be. I'll hug her and kiss her and hold her so tight, because I'll be so glad when she gets here tonight. Hello, Emma. I'm here. It's so nice to oh, see you. Yeah. Are we waiting for Jesus to come with as much anticipation and excitement as Emma was waiting for her grandmother? The Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. My Jesus, my Savior, is coming again to take me to heaven. I don't know just when. He'll come with a shout, a loud trumpet blast. I'll rise up so quickly, I'll see him at last. I can't wait to see him, for I know that he, once out on the cross, shed his own blood for me. I'll bow at his feet to thank him for his grace, then I'll just take a peek at his wonderful face. <coughs> I know he is coming, he promised he would. His promise is true, and his word is so good. In heaven I ever born, ever from there, come quickly, Lord Jesus, yes, this is my prayer. Thank mm -hmm. you. some captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to
Jesus Christ came into the world because he loves us. He is the only one who could live a perfect life and offer himself as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. If, we, if it were not for God's supernatural love for all of us, there would be no hope of salvation. God's love is far above and beyond any human love. We never can fully understand or know the depth of God's great love for us. How broad is Christ's love? Oh, as broad as man's trespass, as wide as the need of the world can be, and yet to the need of one soul, it can narrow. He came to the world, and he came to me. How long is Christ's love, without end or beginning, eternal as Christ and his life it must be, for to everlasting as from everlasting, he loveth the world and he loveth me. How deep is Christ's love? Oh, as deep as man's sinning, as low as that uttermost vileness can be. In the fathomless gulf of the Father's forsaking, he died for the world, and he died for me. How high is his love? It is high as the heavens, as high as the throne of his Lord must be. And yet from that height, he has stooped to redeem us. He so loved the world, and he so loved me. How great is Christ's love. Oh, it passes all knowledge. No man's comprehension its measure can be. It filleth the world, yet each heart may contain it. He so loved the world, and he so loved me. Now it's our turn to sing of that amazing love that he has shown to us. Turn to 186, and we'll stand and sing, And Can It Be?
God commended his love toward us. Now while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 7 and 8. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. 1 John 4, 8. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. 1 John 4, 9. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us first and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. 1 John 4.10 We have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. 1 John 4.16 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Ephesians 1, 3, and 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, <coughs> for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 19. The title of this program is called God's Supernatural Love. And the narrator at the beginning of the program mentioned that supernatural means something that is outside the laws of nature. Well, God is love. It is not supernatural towards God. You know, it is God's nature. To us, our nature is self-love, is it not? You know, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is selfishness. Love is giving uh, unconditionally to others. You know, that last phrase that Mr. Lieb just read, we love him because he first loved us. We cannot love outside the love of Christ. We, by nature, love ourselves and want to serve ourselves. You know... Uh, this whole program, is, you, you, you think of the song the youth group was singing one day. Um, it talk, talks about the different things that Christ did for us, you know, 2,000 years later, uh, ago. And then it says, one day, he's coming, a glorious day. And he showed, God commanded his love towards us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. How many of you find it easy to love those that love you. How many of you find it easy to love those who do not love you, who despitefully use you? Yet that's the command we're given, to unconditionally love our enemies. God, Jesus Christ, up on the cross, bearing the punishment for our sins, the punishment that we deserve, looked down at his persecutors and in love said, Father, forgive them where they don't know what they're doing. He, he is ready and waiting to overlook all your past sins and all, overlook all your future sins. Now, God is a just God. Sin must be punished. So it's not just a forget that you ever sinned. Your punishment was taken for you on Jesus Christ on the cross nearly 2,000 years ago. There is nothing that you can do or I can do to earn the merit, to earn grace in the sight of God, to earn the love of God. It is a free gift to us. You do not earn a gift. It is given to us. And so by faith, we need to say, I believe I'm a sinner. I believe that my destination by nature is eternal damnation in the lake of fire. I cannot save myself. You might think I'm a good person. You know, I, I'm kind to people. I, I, I may even show love to people who are my enemies or who, do, who despitefully use me. But are you trusting in your goodness to have your sins forgiven? The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. You think of the garments that lepers used to bind their wounds. And let's say they put 
those uh, disgusting garments, put a piece of chocolate cake in there and gave it to you to eat, would you eat it? It's filthy. It's vile. That's what God looks at our righteousness. Our righteousness that we might do is wrapped in our sin. And God says it's disgusting. Whatever good things that we think we can do, God says that's disgusting. We need to do it with a pure heart. We cannot wash our sins away. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse our hearts and save us from our sin. This uh, program that was just performed here was praising God for a supernatural love. But everything that was in it, if you had noticed, all the speakers quoted Scripture and quoted the reference where it was found. It is not something that we as a church made up. It's not something that I made up. It is not something that the writer of the program made up. It came right out of the scriptures, right, out, right from the word of God. And so it is challenging us uh, to look towards Christ for that supernatural love so that our sins can be forgiven, our sins can be washed away. That is the whole reason why Christ came, the the. the junior department here saying, born to die. One of the, the uh, scripture readings that was given was, uh, Christ said, uh, no man takes my life. I lay it down that I may take it again. His purpose for coming on that first Noel, if you will, the first Christmas, was so that he would die eventually. And it wasn't by stoning from the Pharisees. Like they tried to stone him several times and he would uh, walk through their midst. It was not his time. He allowed the soldiers to capture him. He allowed the soldiers to rip his beard out, to whip his back, to nail him on that cross, to press that crown of thorns on his head, to stab him in the side. He allowed that and went through great torment and anguish even to the point of separation from his father. And that is something that to us is supernatural. How can God separate from himself? We will never understand the depth there is to God. For, for A.W. Tozer says that once, if there's ever a time that we can understand the greatness of God, that's the moment that we have a small God. We are finite in our minds. We think in finite terms. God is infinite. We will never understand him, but A.W. Tozer also reminds us that we will have an eternity to keep learning more and more and more about God. And of his greatness, there is no end. And God in his greatness stooped down to our level. The great God who created the universe stooped down to our level, sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be born to live a perfect life, born of a virgin so he's not tainted with the sin nature of man, die on the cross, raise himself up from the dead, proving he has power over life. A dead God cannot give us life. He is life. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And so he will one day, when our mortal bodies die, he will one day come again, and those um, who have uh, died in the name of Christ will be raised. And the, those who have not died uh, will be caught up together with Christ in the clouds. And we, so shall we ever be with the Lord. It is be, all because of that first Noel, that first Christmas. That is what started it uh, when Christ came and was born in a manger.
I know the students did that for the Lord, but let's show our appreciation to, to their work. Thank the teachers for helping with all the uh, different parts and whatnot, and Robbie for working the sound, and the sound crew downstairs doing the recordings. <laughs> all right, now is the uh, awards ceremony that we do annually. Uh, the awards are for the attendance. Uh, for the, the previous year, so we're, we're talking the year 2012 to 2013 that ended August of this year. Uh, may I have a list? <coughs> so we give, every year we give uh, awards for faithful attendance, and this year we have two people with absolute perfect attendance. So uh, those two people, when I call their names, they can come up here and grab their special award. Before that, I do want to uh, announce that last year we started a tradition. This year is our second year doing it. Um, any child that went from the beginner department into first grade, we as a Sunday school are purchasing uh, child, children's Bibles to give to our first graders. Uh, before that, it was the first time you get perfect attendance, you got a Bible. Well, not everyone's getting perfect attendance as much as they used to. There's a lot more going on these days and family trips and whatnot. So it's, it's very hard to get perfect attendance. And, you know, the Word of God is precious. And uh, so we decided as a Sunday school that any child going into first grade will now receive a Bible from the Sunday school. So we have this year uh, Anna Peterson, no, Greta, sorry, Greta Peterson, Nathan Saul, and Madeline, M Madeline Cheer, I'm sorry. So uh, Greta Peterson, Nathan Saul, and Madeline Cheer may come up and get their Bibles. Go by departments for the teaching nursery. Uh, for faithful attendance, we have Tommy Peterson and David Saul. Come on up, David. Tommy. Come get your come get your present. David, congratulations. Now, don't get confused if I call your name and say the wrong grade you're in, because this is the grade you were in last school year, okay? So, in kindergarten, uh, we had, for faithful attendance, Greta Peterson, who also got perfect attendance, Robert, or Bobby Peterson, for faithful attendance, and Nathan Saul, with faithful attendance. for faithful attendance, and here is perfect attendance. Congratulations. Bobby and Nathan, congratulations. First grade, we have Anna Peterson with faithful and perfect attendance, and Andrew Saul with faithful attendance. Okay, skipping up to uh, the junior high, 7th, uh, 8th, and ninth grade, we have Willis Coleman, Joe Holen, Amanda Coleman, Ben Holen, Mark Holland, and just Joshua Wiggins. <laughs> Willis, congratulations. This is all faithful attendance. Joe Amanda, Ben, Mark, and Joshua, oh, Josiah. 
You gave me both. Joshua. There you are. Congratulations. And now we gave it away. All right. For the senior high, we have Josiah Wiggins, Peter Holland, Justin Coleman, Dorothy Holen, and Kevin Weed. Justin, congratulations. Dorothy, we'll give it to her father. And Kevin, congratulations. All right, let's uh, dismiss in prayer. Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you sent your son Christ to die for us, that Jesus is the Christ, the promised Messiah to redeem us from our sins. I pray that if there's anyone here tonight that does not know you as their personal Savior, that they may... Come forward to uh, myself, any of the deacons here at the church, that we may help them understand their need for salvation. They may come to know you as their personal Savior and trust wholly in your precious son's death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you for this evening, and we pray you will dismiss us in your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, in the back, there is a, pro a present, and there's an apple that we're handing out to everybody that came out. So as you leave... The ushers will be handing out the apples, so you are dismissed. <laughs>